What's up all you dad hustlers? It's Will Crown back again for another episode of The Dad Hustle. Very excited to be here today with my good friend that I've known for quite a while now, Mr. George Mendoza. What's up, What's up my brother? man? What's up, man? That was, an, that was my bad. That was awkward. <laughs> We, awkward, but. we got the, the, the fingers clapped <laughs> wrongly there, but that's all good because today we got an exciting show ahead of us. This guy is not only a father of two beautiful children and a husband, but he's also a mega hustler out there making it happen with his new brand, Ignite Your Life brand, which has been taking the internet by storm. And I'm excited to learn about how he's been managing to do that alongside with his family life and everything else that he has going on. So get ready for this. Can I say just what an introduction, by the way? Oh, thanks, man. Thanks, appreciate that. You like that? Yeah, it was really good. It hyped me up a little bit, so. Makes you feel like you're a million bucks, right? Yeah. Like, man, I didn't realize I was doing so much. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this show, as you guys know, it's Dad Hustle. It's about being a father. It's about being a family man and making your dreams come to pass. So tell me a little bit about your family, bro. My daughter is two. My son is six years old. He just started nice. first grade, so you know. We get all those little jitters, dropping him off at school already. He gets nervous. My daughter's just running up the walls, going through the terrible twos, always fighting with my son. So that's always fun, right? She's so cute. <laughs> your daughter, his daughter is adorable. Yeah. <laughs> and your son should be in commercials, like for real. Well, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. For all you producers out there listening. <laughs> Hit me up. I remember those days with my kids. It can be a little... uh Tougher on the parents sometimes, even than the kids, right? Yeah, it's schedule conflicts and stuff like that. I gotta adjust to the school, obviously. It's been good so far. Luckily, I, I can move my schedule pretty easily. I have my wife at home that she's been a big help too, and That's awesome. we'll kind of work it all out together. She's a big part in the brand too, so I can't not give her credit, you know what I mean? <laughs> she's, she is. <laughs> and I know his wife personally, we're good friends as well. She's a huge part in this guy's success and everything that he does. So shout out Jessica out there. We're <laughs> psyched to have you hopefully watching. Hopefully she watches your show. Hopefully. <laughs> so how long have you and Jessica been together? I met her in high school and then straight out of high school. We've been together ever since. Kind of like kind of like your story, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Long time. How old were you guys when you got together? How old are you now? You look like you're like kind of young. 25. Young hustle, young dad. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Didn't let it slow you down, obviously. Did you always want to be an entrepreneur or were you at some point looking for that good job? I guess when you come from a family that comes over to the United States and they, and they want to find a good job and they expect you to find a good job and it's always like, this is what you need to do. Go to school, get good grades. If you go to college, great. If not, try to get a job where you have benefits, mm. stuff like that, right? Classic benefits. Yeah, that's where they get you. That's the job, the benefits. I was always like, okay, I guess that's the way to go. I saw my mom work so long at a 7-Eleven for like 13, 14 years already. I saw that growing up and she worked so much and I was like, I don't really want that for myself, you know? I started writing music at a young age. I was actually writing music. Oh, no way. Yeah, like at 14 15 years old. I wasn't trying to work for somebody, you know? So that was my, I was trying to get out of the situation I was by that. And then after that, cool. I just knew I wanted to hustle. Yeah. And I don't want to work for somebody. And that's how it's been ever since. Like, I can't stay happy at a job. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. You've tried that path before, right? And I have too, um, but it just wasn't, wasn't for you. And that's not knocking jobs. Like there are <laughs> jobs out there that are for some people. Some people are wired to be a great employee or maybe even be you know, that C-level executive. They want to work up the corporate ladder, whatever it is. Hey, if that's your hustle, cool. Definitely. You, you, you tried the job thing. When I first met you, you were working somewhere, <laughs> which was very much the, the government job. Tell me about that experience. The post office. And that's basically golden jobs i guess you can say you know you got your benefits you're working outside it's a government job um, you're getting your exercise in during the work day yeah hey a lot of jokes <laughs> around there were i get paid to work out i would walk around i would come every morning and i would see the older guys that have been there for like 20 years i don't want to be that guy you know they can't they could barely walk they could barely do this and it's like yeah i tried it for three years it's not like i didn't like it yeah um, as jobs go yeah it, it was as job. jobs go it's probably my Probably my best job I've had. I like to be outside and stuff like that. You had this passion for entrepreneurship. You knew that you wanted to strike out on your own. You're a young dad, but the very fact that you had this secure job, with government job, good benefits and all that stuff, that you had enough intestinal fortitude to like have the drive to actually step out from that. What was that like? Like, How did that decision come about with you and your wife? If you're not doing what you love, you're not ultimately happy. You don't feel fulfilled. Yeah. So when I you're stepped, making a difference. Yeah. So when I stepped gotcha. out, me and my wife talked about it, and she knew I wasn't happy. You know, I wasn't happy. It was harder to break it to like my mom and stuff like that because they, again, that's you're set. You know, right? Thirty years, you're set. And that's a generational thing too. Yeah. I feel like that generation, my parents, same way. 
they look for that job. They were always looking for that quintessential job that would like set you up for retirement. I feel like in this day and age, that's all a lie. Like that it, it's not gonna work out because you see people that have gone down that path and they're as broke now with their 401ks doing all this stuff exactly. and hardly any money for retirement and having to take out to, for the mortgage. And it, it didn't set them up the way that they were promised it would. I just saw this, uh, this post on Instagram recently that it says, uh, it showed a timeline, right? And it says, okay, when you're a child, you enjoy life, you're a kid, right? And then you work about 17 to 63 or 65, and it has like a timeline, and then you retire. So as soon as you become an adult, it's like, okay, I got a job, and now you're looking forward to retirement, but what about all those years in between? Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you're leaving that gap just so you can enjoy life when you're 60. Why not enjoy it now? Right. You know? Each and every single day. You know, that's a great point you make. I've coached people on entrepreneurship and striking out and doing that kind of stuff. You spend more time in your career, in your job, than you do with your family, than you do at your home, than you do doing anything else. Even more probably than sleeping, if, if you're like me at least. <laughs> I don't know, some people sleep a lot, but you spend more time with that that career, that, that occupation. Why not have it be something that you're passionate about, something that you actually enjoy, right? Yeah, that makes it's perfect sense. That's definitely true. If you're that person where you're working a job, as long as you're working it passionately, if you passionately care about what you're doing, then you're in the right place. Like that's what yeah. you agree. That's what it boils down to. Right? I mean, yeah, because ultimately you, she loves what she's doing. Yeah. So that's why she's gonna pour herself into it and not, you know, not feel like it's draining. It's different between physically drained and passionately drained or emotionally drained. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of people that don't love what they do, they're emotionally drained. So mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to recover from that. Physically drained is like you take a cold shower and your body's good. You know. Right. So yeah, but emotional draining. That leads to heart attacks, that leads to stress, that leads to coming home and having a bad marriage life. Like yeah, that, exactly. That affects, trickles into every other area. Exactly. So now you've actually become your brand. And how long ago did you launch Ignite Your Life brand? Um, we're fairly new, um, barely 824 we launched, but we've been working on it for about a year okay. and some months. Okay, um, wait, 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 back it up. That's, that's cool. So you've been working on this brand. You've put about a year's worth of time to really do, like, what kind of stuff have you done uh, in prepping? Making sure we know the market, making sure it's good. we know uh, how to brand it, uh, working on the logo. My wife drew the logo. She came up, you know, we worked on the concept, and then she drew it up one day, and she texted it to me, and I'm like, that's the one. That's awesome. So, you know, uh, thinking of the perfect name, thinking of ideas, you know, just prepping stages so we won't feel lost as soon as we launch. And we know that... Giving, 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 giving is ultimate before you start receiving. Oh, that's good. So you you were willing to put in the time that it took early on, the, the early stages. I think that's where a lot of entrepreneurs miss out is because there's no slant on you being. Oh, no. He's a little bit younger than me, you know. I, I, I wish I was 25 <laughs> starting over again. But especially a younger guy at 25 years old, a lot of times people, they see the, the word entrepreneur and they get excited about that. It's in flashing lights and they, yeah, I want to be an entrepreneur, but they don't realize like you got to be willing to put in some grit, some hard work, a year's worth of time that they were willing to invest to even prepare for their launch date, which you said was on 8-24. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, it's... Um, what do you do with Ignite Your Life? What is it? It's it's clothing, correct? See the, the brand, which is yeah. awesome. Ignite Your Life brand, IG and T is another logo. Um, and I'm psyched because he brought me a hat. So definitely, you know, <laughs> I'll be rocking my hat. You know what I'm saying, bro? I got a big head, yeah, but it's yeah. all good. It looks good on you, man. Yeah, it's I like it. Fit. These are great. Yeah, they, I mean, they're comfortable. You know, they're manufactured specifically for us. We didn't buy like a, a bulk load of hats and just throw our logo on it. We actually had it manufactured through a company that manufactures them. Nice. So it's awesome. on the bottom up. What is it about? It's basically what we're doing here right now. It's your passion. Mm -hmm. And this is what we love to do. We love to interact with people that they're passionate about something. And I, I know I keep talking about passion over and over and, and loving it, but that's ultimately what the brand is about. And that's mm -hmm. why we go out and we work with passionate people and we film with them and we take pictures of them because we want to inspire other people to find their passion and live out their fulfillment so they'll be satisfied. You know, in the yeah. right <laughs> So you've got the hats right now. In the future, are you looking at any other apparel? Uh, definitely. Uh, we want to be big like Adidas and Nikes and be in those conversations. We will get there. Spreading into shirts right now. We'll be launching two new hats pretty soon. We're working on the mock-ups as we speak. So super excited about mock -up, that. Mock-up, mock-up. <laughs> I just, I don't know where that came from. <laughs> 
So dad hustle, you're putting this whole thing together, you're 25 years old, you're a young family man, how do you pay for all this stuff? Like, you working outside of this? I actually won the lotto. <laughs> nah, just playing, nah. Um, Sweet, I'm glad you're here with me. Bro. <laughs> I found this really great app, it's called TaskRabbit, right? And like I've told you guys on this video, I don't like to work for anybody specifically, so this allows me to set up my schedule, work for people doing, I mean, you can do anything on that app. Pick up something for someone, deliver it to them. But most of the stuff I do is like general handyman stuff or building furniture, mounting TVs. Yeah. That's been such a blessing that I found it. I was skeptical at first because they do charge you $20. You know, at that time I was like, damn. To sign up for the app. Yeah, well, to do a background check and okay. stuff like that. We're like, you know what, let's go for it. And we did. I get constant like hires. People want to hire me. So you're able to work then during the week. How many days a week would you say you're working with TaskRabbit? I do about seven days. Oh, wow. So you're working all week long. Plus, like I know this morning you dropped off the kids to school. Yeah. So you're managing the kids. And obviously, I know your wife, Jessica, does a ton as well. Definitely. So, But then when are you working on the brand? Uh, either late at night or... Uh, and like I said, that's the beauty with TaskRabbit. I mean, I don't have to work completely all day. So it's like split it up, you know. Yeah. Drive back. And, it's a lot of driving, but hey, you got to do what you got to do, sure. you know. And uh, on the brand, is like... If I want to take a certain day off, I take it off. And that's why I say I work seven days too, because when I'm not working on Task Rabbit, I'm still working on the brand yeah. and stuff like that. So Thank it's you. always hustle, hustle, hustle. Good stuff, man. That's awesome. That's what a real dad hustle is all about. Tell me a little bit about your experience as a kid. Did you have a dad in the home and what was that situation like and how it's affected you as a father? My mom and him split up basically when I was born. He was still around, I guess you can say. Okay. <laughs> but yeah. it was kind of like he wasn't there because we knew he was there, but he wouldn't come around. We always lived in Almonte, California, and they he used to live like in San Fernando Valley. Oh wow! So half an hour, basically. Why wouldn't you want to come see us if you were so close? People probably say, "Oh, well, I never knew my dad." Yeah, but it's one thing like you don't know your dad. I know my dad, but I feel like he never really cared. My mom's always been strong, and she's always told us, you know, "Oh, just forgive him. It's okay. Call him on his birthday." And I know a lot of people have different point of view is like nah forget that guy i do talk to him once sometimes he expects me to call him still but that's you know that's that's just the relationship we have but with my mom you know she's always worked i was young she's always worked like 10 11 hours so she was mostly never home like we were literally come home from school she wouldn't be home till like four or five hours later so it's like my sister and my older brother kind of raised me and my younger brother it was a challenge but it made me know that that's not what i want for my kids and my wife, even though I know sometimes it gets a little hard and yeah, ultimately sure. I want better for them. Yeah, marriage isn't easy, but it's awesome to see how what you saw early on in life has impacted you as not only a man, but as a husband, as a father big time. I've seen this guy with his kids. I've seen him with his wife. He's, he's a good man. I know you personally, George. We've known each other a while now, but tell me, would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert? I'm definitely an introvert. Okay. I wouldn't consider myself an extrovert at all. You know, just going back from the messages back and forth, I told you, you know, I was already sweating it. Uh, <laughs> As you can He's like, what questions are you going to ask me? <laughs> tell me now. I don't know if you guys can tell. I have a mic here. I usually speak very low. I don't project my voice. But you're doing awesome, by the way. Oh, thanks. I appreciate that. It's always glammed up on Instagram that you have to be confident. You have to go out. You have to do this. But yeah. honestly, if you're a hustler, you're a hustler. If that's in your DNA, if, that's, right. if you're wired that way, you're going to hustle. Even if you're shy, even in, if you're an introvert. Like, look at right now. I'm talking on the camera and I'm... I'm doing it, but he's it, killing it. It's kind of like any sport or anything you do. You just the more you do it, the more you yeah. get used to it. Even though you're an introvert at heart, and you're still gonna be shy when the cameras are off. Yeah. But once the cameras are on, it's like you're playing a sport. That's, so you know what I mean. That's exactly right, man. Yeah. I feel the same way. Like a lot of times, if I go to an audition, I mean, that's like the epitome of it, guys. If you've never <laughs> been on an audition for an acting job, that's, that's like that's like my deepest fear. <laughs> oh my god, you got a room with three people there watching you like this, and you got to like ready. Go, you know, you got to be ready to perform, but you got to see yourself even when I'm on set, when I'm actually working on a project, I, I see myself even playing a role, like getting out of myself because many, many of you may not realize it, but I also am very much an introvert. It used to be thought that an introvert, extrovert, that the difference was if you like being around, you know, people, if you're loud mouthed and all that kind of stuff, then you're an extrovert. And if you're quiet or shy, then you're definitely an introvert. That's not necessarily the case. Studies now show that an introvert is someone who 
recharges their batteries uh, with quiet time, alone time, that they kind of have to get off on their own to get ready for the week, so to speak. Versus an extrovert, when they're worn out, they recharge their batteries by going out with friends and, you know, going out to a club or whatever it is, like having a good time out. And as much as I do enjoy having a good time <laughs> out, like I recharge my batteries on my own. I need time to myself to contemplate and to kind of get you know, introspective, 100% understand and agree with everything you're saying. Like, you don't got to be an extrovert to be a hustler. And ins- Instagram, and, and they glorify that. They do. They make it look like you just got to have, like, you're the loud mouth guy, and that's why you got the Lamborghini, and blah, 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 <laughs> blah, blah. Listen, if you want it, get after it, because whatever your hustle is, like he said, a hustler is a hustler is a hustler, no matter who they are. So if you're willing to put in the work, you can make it happen. You know, it used to be 10 and 20 years ago that to launch a big brand, you really had to have a huge marketing budget. But this day and age with social media, that's not necessarily the case. And I know this guy has done a great job with social media. I want you to check out his pages for Ignite Your Life brand. But George, tell me how has social media, like how have you used it to really market what you guys are doing? All you guys know, it's it's always a challenge. Like all you guys have Instagram. I know all you guys think about where you're going to post and you want to post. Even if you're not running a business, you know what I mean? The, Fun content. Yeah, you think about it sometimes. You know, it's not always document. I listen to a lot of Gary Vee, uh, a lot of his podcasts, and he always talks about, you know, it's a level playing field no matter what now. And you got to take advantage because that level playing field is going to be gone. Believe it or not, this is still the early stages of social media. Once the big guys like Pepsi, Coca-Cola, all those guys get in here, yeah, all the marketing, all this, like, because you can pay for an ad right now and it's what, like five bucks for a day? That's going to go up. It's all preparation. Like right now I have so many photos and stocked up that I can post right now if I want. We brought out the Instagram page before we even dropped the, the brand. When you were going to drop it at this time, we actually did it like a month before. And we just start kind of build up hype. You know, we started to get people to follow the brand yeah. before we even launched the hat. We didn't even have the hats yet. <laughs> you know, that's awesome. And we were telling people, you know, hey, we're going to launch this brand. Follow us. Follow it. And people were following. When you put out stuff, you just got to make them think like, OK, what's next? And honestly, that's what social media is. You're always wondering what's going on on the other side. I love that. I love what you said, because before you even had the hats, you were posting about what was coming and what you had going on. So often people want to wait until everything is in its place and then that's just a form of procrastination. They never end up doing anything, right? One thing that I've learned along my journey that I'm still learning but it's so true is creation begets creativity. Meaning, the more I create something, the more creative I become. Like The more I'm working towards it, the more ideas are going to pop into my head. I'm going to be able to produce the next one. Same goes for social media. Make sure that you don't wait. Don't... It's so funny. I've talked to guys before. They're like, yeah, I'm going to do this business from home. I got my office all set up. Okay. <laughs> you should see the pictures I put on the wall. Oh, and I got my desk lamp. The desk lamp looks really good. <laughs> Everything's ready to go. It's going to be great. Oh, wait. Oh, I can't start yet. I got to get an office calendar. Got to get a calendar on the desk. Oh, wait, wait. I got to get the... It's just like, you don't need none of that crap. You just got to get started. <laughs> exactly. Once you get started, everything else will come into place. But until you do, nothing will happen. Definitely. And that's so true. And it's funny because back in the day when Pepsi and Coca-Cola started, those guys were regular guys. But guess what? They didn't have a social media platform, but they still went out and got people to like them. Hustle. You know? Yeah. It's like now, yeah, now you can speed up the process, but you still got to, if people don't like you, they're not going to like your brand. Yeah. You know, regardless how the logo looks, if they like you, they're going to like they're going to like it. They're going to love it. They're going to buy it no matter how expensive it is, yep. how cheap it is. They're going to buy it. So in one <laughs> sentence, Ignite Your Life brand stands for? Okay, so we have this quote, everyone has a flame within. You just need to ignite it. Oh, I love that. I love that. And good job keeping it to one sentence. That's awesome. <laughs> I thought he was going to keep going. That's perfect. Uh, where can these guys find you? It's actually just Ignite Your Life brand. No uh, underscores, no extra characters. Just Ignite Your Life brand okay. on Instagram. On our website, it's Ignite Your Life brand. Simple, easy. Website's good to go. You can go on there right now. We have the, right now we only have two caps, but you can, you know, we have this one and then we have a burgundy one, which we call it Flair. This one's called Cole. And that's the thing too. We try to have fun with it. We don't want to just put burgundy hat. Like that. <laughs> right. You know what I we try to have fun with it. Mr. Mendoza, if you could tell our dad hustlers out there one final thing, what would you tell them? Just know that if you want to hustle and it's in your DNA, just hustle, hustle, hustle. And if that's what gets you up in the morning and that's what your passion is and everybody around you is telling you it's not going to work, it's not going to pop off, it's not going to go off, it's not going to be lit or whatever words you're using now. <laughs> um, <laughs> 
Just know that ultimately, if you're passionate about it and it's in your DNA to hustle, you're going to get it done. You're going to get it done no matter what. If you just And don't expect it to be three years, two years. Expect it to be a long journey, say 21 years, 20 years. Sure. And then it'll come sooner because it's like, oh, I was expecting the 20 years and it came in five. Yeah. But be willing to go for the long haul. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So go, go for the 20 years. And if you're 80 years old... Hey, that might just make you stretch to 100. I don't know. Hey, Gary Vee says that once you turn 40, you still have another lifetime. So That's right. <laughs> just getting started. So that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed this content and you feel like it made a difference in your life, I want you to subscribe to Throw It In Drive. As always, my name is Will Crown, and I'm here to help you get to the next level in your dad hustle. Keep hustling, dads. You